Hey there, everybody. It is now Tuesday night and I am back. You get me two nights in a row. So we are here with Healing with Heather tonight. And I don't know if you saw the advertisement earlier, but we'll be talking today about stress. All right. So if you guys, I know stress is big right now. The kids are home. We're doing the jobs. We're playing teacher. We're trying to keep everything together. Nobody's got any space away from each other, right? So I totally get it. I don't even have kids and I totally get it. That stress could be a little crazy right now. Um, maybe more than you expected or maybe you're even stuffing it deep down inside thinking you got it all together, playing cool as a cucumber on the surface, but really inside you just want to run away, right? Okay. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. What's going on, Kim? Hey, Lauren. Um, got a couple gutsy girls watching. I love it. All right. So let's. why does this matter? All right. If you guys are struggling with your results, if you're doing everything right, honestly, half the time, I think you're just not managing your stress properly. This is really important. All right. Listen up. This is what is going on. If this doesn't make any sense to you at all. All right. Stress. That triggers our fight or flight hormones, all right? So norepinephrine, adrenaline, cortisol, the fat storage hormones, all of that. So if all those are circulating at high speed all of the time, when is your body actually resting and recovering to repair from the workout that you did earlier or to help regenerate new cells so you aren't feeling as haggard and tired? Um, so that your hormone levels and your fat storage and everything is being done properly and your body's not overreacting, all right? So stress can really mess us up, guys. It's got to be taken as seriously as your food, okay? So what else does stress do? It interrupts our digestion. That's right. When you're stressed out, your body has no idea if there's, I tell this to my clients all the time, if there's a bear in the house, or if, you know, the dog just like pulled the tablecloth off the table and all the dishes and all the food went flying, like your body has no idea. It just knows that there's a situation, you got to figure it out and you've got to survive, right? Okay, so if you've got just adrenaline coursing through your veins like that, you're, I can assure you your cortisol is running up high. Your food is not being digested properly because all your body cares about is processing you through this particular event, solve the problem, get out now, fight or flight. It doesn't worry about digesting food. It's like, hey, I can deal with this later, okay? So if any of y'all are getting constant bloat, even though you're eating healthy, if any of y'all have weird bowel movements, even though you're eating healthy, if you guys have been through gutsy girls and suddenly your symptoms have come back, but you haven't brought in the foods that normally give you gas, check your stress. Are you taking timeouts to breathe? Are you delegating tasks to others in the household? You can't do everything, okay? You are one human being at the end of the day. As much as we want to be superwoman, we're just not. She's actually just a made-up character. So don't put that kind of pressure on yourself. Um, also with digestion, if you've got food going through your gut and it's not being digested... You've got large food particles that are just accumulating over time. So if you're chronically stressed, like have a chronically stressful job, then you come home and it's stressful, and this is your life going, going, going all the time, I guarantee that you are generating a lot of inflammation and buildup of gas. Um, that's why you may not even understand why it's happening. It's been happening slowly and quietly for a very long time. So that's one. Two, wears out your adrenal glands, man. Stress just makes you haggard and tired because your body can't regenerate new cells. It's just constantly trying to put out fires and help you survive. Um, it's also an endocrine disruptor. So hormones, I mentioned this in the very beginning. So if you're chronically stressed, if your fight or flight hormones, especially cortisol, is raised at the end of the day, you are not getting a good night's sleep. Your cortisol levels, when it should be going lower so that your, your um, melatonin levels can rise and you can get a restful night's sleep, if that's not happening, you're not getting a restful night's sleep. You're not recovering. So all that good work you're doing in the gym, you might be seeing half the benefits. Maybe not even that. So this is how seriously you guys have to take this, okay? Your hormones get whacked out. All right. So what happens? Sleep disruptor, 
less repair, you're more haggard and tired, that cycles back to just your adrenals being worn out, and you can see how that messes with your digestion and the cycle continues, okay? So, now to solutions. You're like, okay, I get it, Heather. What, do you, what am I gonna do about it? Solutions. Let's talk about some of the little things that you can do starting tomorrow or two days from now when Amazon brings a product to your door, all right? One, simple thing. Incorporate some adaptogens into your diet. However, I caution that. You cannot just throw a little maca powder in something and then ta-da, you're fixed. This has to be a holistic solution. So you gotta attack it from a bunch of different fronts. Throw it in your food. I got a couple good adaptogens for you. One is maca powder. I like to throw just a little bit, maybe a little half a teaspoon or a teaspoon on, you know, your oatmeal or in yogurt, things like that. Um, always look for USD or organic, that kind of stuff. Um, cordyceps, mushrooms. I know it sounds weird, but you can even throw it. You can find it in coffee. This is by Four Sigmatic. Um, you have to purchase this from their website. Uh, but they actually make coffee with cordyceps and chaga. And cordyceps is really good for managing stress and hormone regulation. Uh, ashwagandha root. That's like ginseng. All right. That I actually have a great source for that. I'm going to post you guys a link not tonight, tomorrow, um, but there is an adaptogen blend that Amazing Grass makes. It includes ashwagandha and other herbs and adaptogens, and you can just throw it in your smoothie. You get some stress relief and some protein at the same time. So, but that's fantastic, specifically ashwagandha, because it helps with your cortisol levels, right? Fat storage hormone. So we want that regulated. All right. Number two, sleep routine. If you don't have one, you got to get one, okay? Um, you also, if you've got interrupted sleep, we've got somebody in this group that I might be talking to directly, um, you got to work on your breathing and your visualization techniques. I know it sounds hokey, but try this one practice. The Navy does it. The military does it. SEALs do it. Not like SEALs that swim, but Navy SEALs when they're in stressful environments. They breathe four seconds in four seconds out, and all they think about is their breath. That is it. They don't think about the to-do list. They don't think about what hubby is doing next to them snoring. They don't think about any of that. They just listen to their breath, and eventually they fall asleep. So try purposely working on getting quality sleep. If you need to start meditating every day, get an app. Get Calm. Get Insight Timer. Those are free. Get Headspace and subscribe. What's going on, Steph? Um, there's a million resources out there, but here's the thing. Just because you meditate once doesn't mean you're fixed. You have to make a practice of it because it's not just going to help you in that moment. It's going to help you understand how to regulate your stress response in the moment when you're just in your regular daily life. So that's, that's something that you're not going to see the benefits of until you have a prolonged practice, but start today. It's free. Um, if you've never heard of tapping, Google it tapping technique. This is very, very helpful in terms of calming your stress down, especially if you're the type you wake up first thing in the morning and you just start to panic a little bit of your to about your to-do list. Try tapping. Um, do a data and mind dump before bed if you are one of those that just can't sleep at night. Uh, write everything down you got to worry about tomorrow or everything on your mind so that it's just out there on paper. You're not going to forget about it. You can come back to it in the morning. Um, Exercise. However, caveat, if you are short on sleep, your exercise, it's not giving you much benefit. 100% bar none. Don't even go there. Go get your sleep instead. But exercise otherwise is a great way to work off stress in a positive way. Especially right now, when you're stuck in the house with everybody, get outside. All right, that's your moment to breathe. And the kids can't chase you if you're running down the street, you know, at, I don't know, six miles an hour. So get outside, get some exercise, get a good sweat that always brings out the endorphins. Uh, it doesn't work as fast as candy and cookies, but you know where that gets you to. Um, setting boundaries. All right, so if you've got some energy vampires, it could be your own husband, it could be a particular child, it could be a coworker, it could be your neighbor, it could be your mother always calling you. Like, set some boundaries about whatever is just sucking energy from you and not really delivering much back. It's really important. Uh, nobody's going to respect your boundaries unless you respect your own boundaries. Um, limiting technology after certain hours. If you're the type scrolling through your phone, did you know there is a setting 
in your phone where you can have all your apps, especially your social ones, you can select which apps, they can turn off at certain times. You can't get in them. All right, so why don't you check your settings in your iPhone? Maybe do a little of that if you catch yourself scrolling. Really messes with your sleep hormones. And then the last but not least, essential oils. All right, so a lot of you guys, you, you probably have these three essential oils laying around. Lavender, lemon, and peppermint. So these are the top three for relaxation as well as reviving you, just awakening your cells, making you feel more alert. And they sell these things in little roller balls you can throw in your purse. You can even get a diffuser and put it by your bed if that's the best place for it. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about stress tonight. I hope that gave you guys some ideas um, to put forth, but know this, stress management in the beginning, it's a choice. People are going to step on you. The world's going to step on you until you stop allowing it to happen. All right. So with that said, I hope you guys go take a little better care of yourself during this time. And I am over and out. I will post that adaptogens by Amazing Grass link as soon as we got it on the website. All right. Take care, guys.